So just imagine you have shoes you don't like <laughs> and you just eat them. And even more imagination, you take the same material you use to make the shoe off and you repair your heart after a heart attack. That sounds like superhero powers, doesn't it? Well, if we have a clear look what we use nowadays um, in materials like shoes, in med tech applications, in our cars, in our everyday life, we use a lot of plastics. But wouldn't it be cool, like Spider-Man, in that you just shoot out a web with one shot out of your forearm and just, you know, to hold up a full-speed train and save lives? That's fascinating. And actually, the material is fascinating. The shooting, well, we can debate on that, because that doesn't work scientifically. But the material is cool. So the question is, can we use that type of material? Can we use Spider-Man technology to actually replace fibers made of plastics, other type of materials made of plastics, and have this vision, or is this nonsense? Well, why is this maybe not a so bad question? Well, if we just continue producing plastics as we do nowadays, and this is taken from the McKinsey's for World Economy Forum this year, we will triple the amount of plastic production by the year of 2050. And by that, we of course increase the waste of plastics. And you're probably aware of that, the waste ends up in the oceans. And just look at the chart. What you will see is that by 2050, we will have more plastics in the ocean than fish. And I think this is really one thing to think about. Can we actually reduce that amount of material by something that is fully degradable? Something that you can eat? Can I drink out of a bottle that I wear tomorrow as a shirt and maybe next day I eat the shirt? That would be cool, wouldn't be? So we need, obviously, new materials. And if we just look back what happened in the last one or two centuries, well, there was a lot of innovation concerning fibrous materials in the 19th century, where we get denim, where we get other cool stuff, which is based on natural ground materials. But then there was a big gap of innovation. And it restarted in the 1930s with chemistry arising and we got a lot of new chemical fibers, starting with nylon. And many people here in this room will have nylon-based textiles. Uh, and it even continued. So they found new, better fibers, and there was the development of Kevlar, a high-performance fiber you can use, for instance, for bulletproof and vests. But this is already more than 40 years ago. Since then, we really have no new innovative fiber. And the big point there is that we really need this kind of new super type materials that at the same time are fully biocompatible and biodegradable. So how about just taking a spider's web, and it's as simple as that, you take a racket and you wrap it around one or two webs and you get a really strong thing to play with. So don't be afraid, it works. You see, it's a tiny little bump here. It will be gone by the end of this talk because this material has shape memory. It can actually get back to its original state. It's mechanically strong. I can clash it with my hand. I mean, it has to withstand the impact of an in-flying prey. So the spider that it makes this kind of web, it even can catch birds in full flight without damaging the web. That's the cool thing. Another cool thing is if you have a close look at the fibers, even if I touch it, you will not find bacteria, fungi, germs. It's sterile. So obviously we have here a material that you could use for its mechanical purposes, but also for its medical purposes. It's a super material. Put it in the shoes, repair your heart. This was the idea. This was why I got fascinated about this type of material 
It's just one drawback. If you try to take that from nature, if you try to use spiders as a producing a host, you have the problem that spiders are cannibalistic. So if you put them, two of them together in a box, next day you have one survivor. That's not good for um, a scale-up process. <laughs> so the question is, how can you do that? produces the material, and then you have to adopt it to a technical process. And this is what we call a Spider-Man technology, but it's not like Spider-Man does it. It's not shooting out something of your forearm. So what we have to do is, we have to produce the raw material, and the raw material is protein. It's a silk protein that you literally can eat. The spider eats the webs when it's no longer of use. So they can actually recycle the material and reuse the amino acids that they have been put into, the, into this web. So it's fully degradable in comparison to plastics material. And it has all these really nice properties. So we actually manufacture now these silk proteins by bacteria but then we have to find a technological, uh, technological solution to make fibers. And we call these fibers biosteel. Here you find a roll of that. So this is the processed fiber, and the properties are pretty much identical to what we find in nature. So how can we do that? That's the big question. Now, think about Spider-Man. How that does Spider-Man get this superpower? He's bitten by a spider. Well, in reality, that won't do much. It hurts a bit. If you're allergic, you might get some reactions. But we, you will not transfer the power of a spider. But what you can do is you can identify the blueprint, the genetic information for the silk molecules. And if you know that, if you identify these genes, you can transform these genes, you put them on a transporter, on a vehicle, and then put them in another host. And we have chosen bacteria, Escherichia coli. We have them in our intestine, a lot of them. And you can actually train them, so to say, to produce spider silk, but no fibers, just the raw material. And then you actually have to have a close look how the spider makes a fiber out of this material. It's not shooting like Spider-Man, it's drawing. And if you understand all these natural phenomena, then you actually can develop a process that allows you to make such fibers. But can you make shoes that you can eat? Well, that was a big question that we had in the last years. Can we make really um, a product out of that? And um, the product would have the advances that it is lightweight, like silk. It actually has a microclimate control. It is a vegan because we produce it not with animals anymore. We produce it with bacteria. And actually, it's not smelly. So if you sweat in your shoes, they're not stinky because bacteria cannot stick to the surface, remember? And um, so you also have some moisture management because silk actually can very easily uptake and release water. And therefore we like silk clothes so, so much. So the question is, can we make shoes out of that? Yes, we can. Um, and these are shoes, you, you literally can eat it. You need good teeth because <laughs> the fibers are strong, right? Um, but you can eat them, besides the sole. So far, the sole is still made of plastics. I'm sorry about that, but we work on that either. So now that we have this technology, are there more ideas? Can we actually supplement a lot of other plastics that we have in everyday life? And all these plastics that we have, especially in cosmetics, 
in skincare, hair care products. They will all go to our aquatic systems. So it would be a very nice idea to use the technology to put that into cosmetic products, and that already happened. So you can have cosmetics, skincare products, hair care products, even products for, for other parts of your body um, that contain spider silk. And there's a cool thing about that, because if you take that cream, put it on your skin, it immediately builds a film. So we no longer have fibers, now we actually make a protecting film of silk. And this has pretty much the same properties as the fibers. It protects your skin from getting attacked by bacteria, by pollution, by dirt, and it moisturizes your skin. That's the cool thing. And once we found that out, that we have this protecting function, we had the next idea. What happens to stuff that we put inside our body? What happens with implants? A lot of implants cause some side reactions, so our body doesn't like to have other stuff stuck into it, right? So it tries to get rid of it. And if it cannot degrade it, it tries to encapsulate that. And that was one of the biggest problems um, that some surgeons had. They worked with uh, mama carcinoma patients, so breast cancer patients. And the point is that if you um, lose your breast completely and you have to remodel that plastically, um, they typically use silicon breast implants. And the side effect of breast implants is severe because in one-fourth of um, the patients, they actually develop a fibrosis, which is very harmful. It hurts. And it can be actually deadly, so you have to remove the implant. So what happens if um, you just coat now the surface of the silicon implant with spider silk. Well, actually, it's like in the stealth mode. The body does not recognize this um, implant any longer as, as foreign. It likes the silk surface. So therefore, um, we don't get this fibrosis, we don't get the side effects. And right now, this is in human beings, and we hope to get through the regulations so that we can actually sell the product next year. So that's a pretty cool thing. But remember, at the very beginning, I told you, wouldn't it be even cooler if we can repair some damaged tissue? Can we repair a heart? So this is like a heart looks after a heart attack. So if we survive the heart attack, there's always a scar left, because every heart attack damages our heart tissue, um, and our heart is not able to regenerate this damaged tissue. And one of the reasons is um, that hard muscle cells cannot migrate. They cannot actually get into um, this damaged area. And the cool thing with spider silk is you can print it. And look at that, at that movie. This is a silk gel which actually behaves like toothpaste. If you squeeze it, it, it flows. If you don't squeeze it, it stands still. So you can fill up now any damaged area with any kind of, um, of the silk gels, and it's even cooler because you can now take the patient's heart muscle cells, place them in the gel, and print now a heart with the cells inside. And now look what the cells do. They like it. They start to beat. So these are printed heart muscle cells on spider silk and they synchronize, they come together, they communicate, and this is what you need to regenerate um, a living tissue in heart. So this is vision, this is definitely vision, but we hope to have that in our surgeries in the next 20 years. That's the idea. So with that, I would, thank you. With that, I hope I could give you some idea that Spider-Man technology is scientific. It's not nonsense. Some of it is, but not all of it. It's some vision behind that, and it could help us, well, personally, concerning our health, but it also could actually be good for the planet. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.